Hey everyone! So I'm here in the 100 acre wood. Actually, no. I'm in the Arboretum at Cornell University, but it reminds me of the 100 acre wood. It's so beautiful. I love Winnie the Pooh. Like if you never read the original book, like I highly recommend it. It's so good. My favorite character is probably Rabbit because he's like so funny. I just love Rabbit. <laughs> so yeah, I thought this would be a really good place to keep on reading our story together. And I just wanted to say hi and show you all this amazing place. So let's get going. Chapter 12 The next day, Penny and Joshua had nothing to do but prepare their small ship for battle. The day was rather clear, but Joshua could sense something in the air, like a storm was on the way. He didn't mention this to Penny, not wanting to frighten her. After all, perhaps he was wrong. Penny, meanwhile, was a bit nervous. She had never seen the sea urchin before, and it did not sound good from what she heard about it. She willed herself to be brave, however. Joshua was brave, so why couldn't she be just as brave? Things were getting a bit tense. Penny looked over at Joshua. So, do we have a battle plan? I'm trying to think of one. The thing is, Penny, the sea urchin has metal spines sticking out, sticking out of it from all sides, making it impenetrable from any attack. Not even the strongest cannons can even make so much as a scratch on the sea urchin. What about the bottom of it? Are there spines on the bottom? Probably. And even if it didn't, what kind of cannon could reach the bottom of a boat? That is true. We thawed in silence for a few minutes. I guess we need a better plan, said Penny, as Joshua took out a spyglass. I think it's too late for that, Penny, he said. Why? Because. Do you see that tiny speck on the horizon? Yes. What of it? That, said Joshua grimly, is the sea urchin. Chapter 13 But we're not ready, Penny exclaimed. The moon is, said Joshua, surveying the full moon from the light of the setting sun, and it's only one hour to high tide. What's more, Penny, there's a storm coming. Penny turned pale. Why now, of all times? Joshua stood firm. This time, I'm not running away. We'll stand up to the captain if it's the last thing we do. They did not have long to wait. The sea urchin was soon upon them. Captain Killian, shouted Joshua. The captain looked over the edge of his ship. Can it be? he exclaimed as the storm began to rise. It takes more than a dirty pirate to end me, Joshua shouted bravely. And so it is. Look who's afloat on the ocean in a little toy boat. His crew laughed. And just as I thought I would have to locate the sea wolf himself. Joshua turned to Penny. I don't think we have a chance, Penny. Stay low. Don't let them see you. If you escape now, you'll make it to shore. Penny shook her head. I'm staying right here, Joshua. We're going to save the ocean magic. But we can't. You're afraid of storms. Joshua, I won't let you down. You have to trust me trust. Suddenly, he did trust her. For the first time in his life, he put his trust in someone else. And that made him realize something. That was his weakness. He had never been brave enough to trust anyone but himself. The weakness that Vanessa had told him about was not about himself, but what was inside of himself. And that opened his eyes to the sea urchin's weakness. Hey, everybody. Okay. So, I'm coming to you now from the midst of a golf course. I'm not golfing, but it's such a beautiful place, so I just wanted to come here. <laughs> so, we're on the last couple chapters of Son of the Sea Wolf, and I hope you've had as much fun as I have, because I have had so much fun reading this out loud with you guys. So, this little hill is where I'm going to be reading the last few chapters. So. Hope you guys get a good view of the place so it can feel like you're here with me. All right, let's get started. Chapter 14 Penny, I know what to do. You do? Yes, and it's going to seem crazy, but you have to trust me, okay? Yes, Joshua. Joshua and Penny went over to the edge of the boat. You would be wise to surrender, sea dog, shouted Captain Killian. You are right, Captain Killian. I surrender. The captain looked confused. You surrender? Yes, I do. Joshua, what are you doing? Penny whispered. Just trust me and stay low, he whispered. I'm disappointed in you, Joshua. I thought there was some bravery underneath all that fur. Bring him aboard, men. A cable was attached to the side of the boat. 
Jones, the first mate, came over and led Joshua and Penny to the other boat. Joshua, we meet at last, said the captain. Joshua just looked at him. Have you anything to say? Joshua remained silent. Very well. Jones, get the sea orb. Jones came back with a blue-green ball that looked as if it had been carved out of crystal. Captain Killian grabbed it eagerly. Now I may harness the powers of the ocean, he cackled, and the key to it is right here. He went over to Joshua. Put your paw on this orb, he commanded. Why, demanded Joshua. No questions. Do as I command. Joshua suddenly realized something. You can't use the sea orb, he shouted. That's why you wanted to find me. Only a dog can use the sea orb. That is not so, cried the captain. Then use it, Joshua dared the captain. I do not have to take orders from a mangy sea dog. Do as I say. Joshua suddenly felt braver than he had ever felt before. You can't, and I'm not going to help you. With that, Joshua broke free from his captors. Get him, shouted the captain. Chapter 15 Joshua ran over to where the cannons were kept and began to load one. Joshua, what are you doing? shouted Penny, as she too wrenched away from her captors. Penny, help me load this cannon. We've got to fire on the sea urchin. But we're in the sea urchin. Exactly. It's impenetrable to any attack from the outside. But just like all of us, it has a weak point on the inside. Exactly. Stop them, shouted the captain. Penny ran toward them. What are you doing? shouted Joshua. Getting you some time, said Penny. She ran over to the other side of the boat, and the men ran to catch her. No, you fools! The dog, not the girl, shouted Captain Killian. Joshua, meanwhile, had successfully loaded one of the cannons and was now firing it at the ship. Boom! The explosion was terribly loud, but it was working. The ship was beginning to sink. Penny, get the orb, shouted Joshua. Penny ran over to Captain Killian and wrenched the orb from his grasp, which was not very easy, as the storm was now in full swing. Penny, get to the sea wolf and cut the cables, Joshua shouted. Penny ran over to the cables that connected the two boats and climbed aboard the sea wolf. With shaking hands, she cut through the cables. Joshua fired one more time with a bigger cannon, but this time the explosion was too big. The entire sea urchin went up in flames. Chapter 16 Joshua, screamed Penny, where are you? The storm was raging and the fire from the explosion was mixing with it to create a truly horrifying scene. As she stared at the storm and the fire, Penny realized the truth. Joshua hadn't made it. She sat down and cried. Penny was suddenly aware of a strange wind blowing. Not the kind you'd expect to feel during a storm, but a light summer sea breeze. She looked up. There was something riding on the waves. She strained her eyes to see. It was the sea wolf. Even though she had never seen the sea wolf, she knew right away who it was. He rode on the waves of the storm, right into the fire. He dove underneath the waves and brought up something. Was it? Yes, it was Joshua. The sea wolf rode the waves with Joshua on his back all the way into the boat. Are you the sea wolf? Penny whispered. The sea wolf looked at her with his cold green eyes. That is true. Oh, can you save Joshua? The sea wolf gave no answer, but put Joshua down on the deck. He looked at him for a long time. Then he put his face next to Joshua's and breathed on him. A change came over Joshua. He was lifted in the air, and the stars from the night sky seemed to dance around him. His fur changed from black and white to the silver color of the sea wolf. His whole body changed too until he looked exactly like the sea wolf himself. Then the sea wolf took the sea orb in his mouth and lifted it to the sky. At that moment, the storm calmed down and the fire was put out. Joshua suddenly looked alive. He opened his eyes, the cold green eyes of the sea wolf. Is, is Joshua? Your son? asked Penny, eyes wide. Yes, he is my son. That's why Captain Killian wanted him so badly. Only a true descendant to the sea wolf can use the sea orb and harness the ocean magic. Penny stared at Joshua, who was floating down. He landed on all four paws and stood up, straight and tall, to face his father. It has been a long time since I've seen you, son. 
said the sea wolf. And I you, father, answered Joshua. I see you are all grown up. You've overcome your weakness, son. I am very proud of you. Thank you, father. Are you ready to begin your destiny as the son of the sea wolf? Joshua nodded. I am ready. That is good. I will see you again. With that, the sea wolf walked off the boat and onto a wave. He then dove underneath the water. My father, whispered Joshua. Penny looked at Joshua with shining eyes. You look like him now. Joshua smiled. Penny, I have a lot to do. It's my duty now to follow in my father's footsteps and protect the ocean. Will you come with me? Of course, Joshua. What are friends for? Joshua smiled. He didn't mind having Penny around. In fact, he rather liked it. Joshua turned his boat toward the rising sun. He did not know what came next for him in this new life, but he was prepared for whatever came. And so begins the legacy of the son of the sea wolf.